My name is Richard McDowell. I work in the conservation and land management industry, and I'm a propagator, grower, and collector of our unique Western Australian native flora. And I'm really into quandongery. That's right, I propagate and grow quandongs. Quandongery. I just, it just, I don't know, it just appeared in my brain one day, and uh, that was it. It pretty much describes what I do. I mess around with quandongs, basically. I live in Joondalup with my beautiful wife of nearly 30 years, who's Balladong Noongar Yoga, and my two daughters, Esther and Emily Jane. So here in the city of Joondalup, we've created a, what I call an NBCV, which is a Native Biodiversity Conservation Verge. And that's essentially what I'm about. I'm about local native flora, biodiversity, conserving our unique Western Australian flora. I've been particularly pleased with the birds that I've built here. The pleasure comes from seeing the results play out on a seasonal cycle, but also when you see the diversity of insects and birds that are here, the quantity of them is phenomenal. The birds find this place a haven. But the big diversity that you find with doing a verge like this is in the insect world. I've come to appreciate the uniqueness of our Western Australian native flora and the diversity of it. Local species belong in a, in a local area. A single Kwandong tree over time can develop into a Kwandong system and it will actually pop up new trees from the roots. And that's actually what's happened in our uh, verge and garden. The Kwandong Santalum acuminatum is the quintessential Aussie bush tucker species. It's a large shrub to a small tree that's found across a wide spread of southern Australia. And it's a hemiparasitic species. So when its roots go out uh, in the bush, it'll latch on to the roots of other uh, species and form what's called a hosteri, and we'll take some of the water and nutrients from them. So this is the fruit from the Kwandong. Uh, we have this rich outer flesh, which is high in vitamin C and antioxidants. It has a very um, almost sour, wouldn't quite say bitter taste, but a very individual sort of taste. Um, yeah, it's very, um, it's very rich in its, own, in its own way. It's definitely uh, Australia's very own superfood. This fruit can be used to make uh, jams, chutneys, jellies, and it's fantastic for making uh, different types of pies, particularly with apples. But one of the best combinations actually is uh, Kwandong and mulberry uh, with ice cream and a bit of cream. Beautiful. Propagating Kwandongs from seed has been an area of uh, much urban myth and innuendo for many years. You'll hear stories about, uh, oh, you need to have an emu and you need to chase after emu poo, um, all this kind of thing. You know, you need to put the seeds in bleach and essentially, once you get the flesh off, you need to crack that outer shell so that oxygen and air can get to the kernel. And I've also found that the seasonal timing of doing that is important as well. We get mass germination of Kwandongs uh, in the middle of the year, so May, June, July. I grew up in the countryside of Northern Ireland, and probably one of my first memories of the natural world, if you like, was my grandfather taking me for a, for a walk when he used to walk the dog. And he uh, showed me a little pea in the Irish countryside. And of course, I was only about five or six at the time. And seeing that you could pick a little pea from the Irish countryside and eat it, and that memory has stayed with me ever since. And I, I've, I spent my childhood running around the fields in the lanes of the town, uh, Ballyclare, where I grew up. So it kind of was inevitable that, that when I came back to Australia, I was, I was going to be in the bush and messing around with nature. I think my interest in the West Australian natives developed gradually over time. Certainly Lola was the one that got me interested in the Kwandongs. 
shortly after we were married, um, we would quite often be looking for them in the, in the wheat belt because they have such a uh, connection to her family and her culture. When Esther and her sister Emily Jane were younger, we used to go four-wheel driving a lot and we would go to various locations on Lola's country. A lot of granite rock outcrops, a lot of nature reserves out the back of Meriden, Dudlikai and Kellebaran out that way. Esther has taken very strongly to her mum's culture, particularly in terms of the language, but also with the uh, flora. She's um, picked up on a lot of the native flora and now uses a lot of that in her, her artwork. A lot of the work that I've made in the last couple of years has been about the importance of place and of endemic species um, within our natural areas. So, I mean, my mum's country and my country, Baladon country, is central wheat belt. So a lot of the work that I've made has been about being homesick on your own country, yeah. I help myself to the garden sometimes uh, to do a lot of pressings of flowers and things, but also for dyeing. Scovolus spinescens we utilise quite a lot. A lot of my family uses a lot. Uh, Dad grows it. That one we use in a tea. The bush medicine is definitely something Mum's very passionate about. I think both my parents are. When you've got a whole bunch, just bring it over and trim it into the pot. We can't necessarily go out to Balladon country all the time and collect scovola spinescence. So now with it being grafted on a local scovola, makes it a heck of a lot easier for us to have access to. And the elders at the elders group that I work with, they use it all the time. It's, yeah, a pretty important plant. The verge in the garden and the propagation of the flora is more of a journey. There's never an end result with it. You never stop learning and it just keeps going, it keeps going. <laughs>